Christie. When you look at all of this, could there have been a tri uh, trial of his peers, or did he just have to go with a graphic designer and a principal? Well, I mean, this, I think, is a testament to one of the failings of the so-called jury system of your peers, Tom. I mean, I, I find this uh, uh, verdict mind-boggling. Uh, again, as we've talked about many times, Wall Street is like the Army. It's like Jack and Littleton and a few good men. You follow orders or people get hurt. People die. Fab Torre was merely a foot soldier in the Army on Wall Street. He was doing what he was told to do. He didn't design this security. He is just executing the orders to get it done. And, and I think Floyd Norris in today's New York Times has it absolutely right. Uh, it's like gambling. It's a casino. Uh, but, you know, you've just now convicted the croupier for playing right. the game. Okay, Bill, I saw in the Bloomberg News coverage, which I thought all the newspapers were great today, including Bloomberg News, a telling paragraph. Folks, I don't want to get bogged down in the minutia here, but this is a woman within this transaction. And there was a basic idea uh, here of saying, well, they did this, et cetera. But nowhere within the trial did the woman involved with ACA actually say that. Ms. Schwartz testified she was misled into believing John Paulson was investing in this transaction. She wasn't able to recall any instances where the guilty party tour falsely said that Paulson was investing. Bill Cohen, I'm lost. That paragraph makes no sense whatsoever. You know, Tom, uh, look, I did a lot of research about this for my book, and I remember Paolo Pellegrini, who I used to work with in yep. Lazard, who met with Miss Schwartz at the bar of a hotel in Jackson, Wyoming, to go over. So there you have Paolo, who works for John Paulson, meeting with Miss Schwartz at the bar in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, discussing what would be in this security. I mean, how could she not know that Paulson was involved? I mean, it's, okay. it's mind-boggling. You and I know Mr. Pellegrini. He's a real slick, smart, fancy, Hamptons-like guy. You put <laughs> him in front of that jury, do they look at him as the evil Wall Street incarnate? Well, I'm sure they must have, because uh, Paolo, you're right, is a very interesting Wall Street character. Uh, and I'm sure he did not play well with the jury. And in, even in his own testimony, he seemed quite befuddled. Uh, and so I think what this is is more symbolic, unfortunately, than justice done. As one of the jurors said, you know, uh, he, was, we, he was a bit of a scapegoat. This is one quote that didn't get away. I mean, that's just garbage. I mean, Tom, for uh, Ralph Chiaffi and Matt Tanin, the two hedge fund managers at Bear Stearns, to get away with not being uh, uh, convicted of destroying their hedge funds and then Bear Stearns is a travesty. This is an equal travesty. Well, Bill, to me, what stands out here, I mean, shouldn't Mr. Tor feel a little let down by his defense team who were so confident that they didn't even put any witnesses on the stand? You know, Sarah, I think that's a very good point. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, I don't know about legal strategy, but you're right. That obviously showed a degree of confidence that overplayed their, their hand to continue the metaphor of the gambling. Uh, I, I, I think that, you know, they, they had reason to be confident, but obviously they goofed on that.